for one here tonight. We're gonna make a compound butter to go with a steak. This might be a new concept for some of y'all watching. We're gonna combine umami anchovies, flor de garum, which is a Mediterranean version of fish sauce, with some American chili and some Spanish uh, smoked paprika, a little bit of lightly toasted, but still pretty sharp garlic, and some lemon, and of course the butter. Watch what we do with this. To make this tasty compound butter, we're gonna need some anchovies, not all these, but we are gonna use it on a basis of a quarter stick of butter. We're gonna take that little bit of uh, garlic right here. Actually, I'm gonna blend the garlic right in with the anchovy on this other board here. Probably gonna take about, I am gonna say, what's equivalent to about four, four little fillets of the anchovy with one clove of that garlic that's been lightly toasted, just lightly toasted. Uh, I want the sharpness of the garlic in there. Um, I have this kind of blunt knife. It's actually a little sprints knife that we have here. So a Parmigiano knife or even a butter knife would actually work fine. You're really not looking to have a sharp blade uh, in this situation. What you really wish you had is a mortar and pestle. That's what I don't have. So I'm thinking of what is the, what is the best thing to do if you wish you had a mortar and pestle vibe going and you had a cutting board. Well, I'm probably not gonna use a knife though. So I figured another blunt little instrument like this can help me out, right? So I like things to be in little pieces, uh, not always completely, completely uh, pulverized. I like a little bit of texture um, as opposed to having something go to a full, full puree. So I will give this another minute like this. Okay. I think it's pretty good and mashed. We're gonna put that into the butter, which is gonna, in our soon to be compound butter, we're gonna change the boards out. We're gonna switch gears to the other ingredients, which are quarter teaspoon of smoked Spanish paprika. This is a one teaspoon uh, measurement of some fine chili powder. And then I have just a quarter teaspoon of salt, believe it or not, I found that we needed a little bit of salt. And added to that, a few zests of some fresh lemon. And get that in there. Now this butter you're gonna be able to use it for pork chops, fish, shrimp. You can just have it with some grilled bread and it'll feel like a meal. You can put it on mushrooms actually. I figure umami, I, I think umami is one of those flavors that do not fight. If you put umami with umami, it is a, a layering agent because not every umami is the same. Put a little acid with that and some fat. You got, you're making yourself, uh, you're setting yourself up for a pretty amazing situation. I went a little heavy there on the zest. I might pull a little out because I was talking too much. All right, so the zest is really just about eight to 12 passes on the lemon. And then even better, we're gonna put about a teaspoon and a half or so of lemon juice. Now we're gonna mix this up with a, a, with a firm whisk. If you didn't have a whisk, you could start it with a fork. It could get you a little farther along maybe. We might even do that here because again, I don't really want to get out the Cuisinart and get all fancy with uh, plugging things in. I'm trying to make this as a basic home cooked version of a nice fancy compound butter that can really impress yourself with how far you can get with a few of these ingredients. These are kind of, this is a staple uh, concept here in the Mediterranean. Again, we're just mixing that around. And then the whisk I'll put in, because I like to whip the butter a little bit. So in an ideal situation, you will make this and then serve it. You'll have your butter at room temperature, you'll whip it, and then you'll serve it at the dinner party. Putting it back in the fridge is actually counterintuitive. The beauty of this butter is that you want to have it soft and fluffy and full of air. And especially if you get to have a little bread with it by, by itself as the prelude to what, what might come. That is the magic of this recipe. Flavoring a butter and then getting it rock hard again is kind of taking away the fun. So you will see me here trying to get some air <clears throat> into the butter. Continue that for about three to five minutes. So it's like washing your hands half, right? There you go, three to five minutes. 
have passed. Not really, actually. We're not even close. We're about at the minute mark, so I'm gonna continue doing this and, and splice the film so it's not So too we've long. been whipping this around for about three to five minutes. I've used a spatula here to kind of clean my sides, right? But one thing we haven't done, we haven't measured in the fish sauce. This is Florida Garum, it's a Spanish product. And the concept is the same. It's basically rotten putrefied anchovies that's made into a kind of like anchovy liqueur. And it's a, it's a very, it's, 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 it's the food of nobles. So you gotta, you gotta check it out. But this is like what I see here, what you see in this picture is, is probably like a, a 15 year supply for me if, if we, if we live that long. Um, so I'm gonna put in about like it, whatever I could try to measure as like a four drops or eight, micro liters or something crazy like that but it's gonna probably come out to be a 16th or an 8th or 12th of a uh, teaspoon it's gonna be tiny so I'd rate the umami higher and the fishiness lower on this brand here um, which is absolutely elegant it comes in this little, little box too but I think they should sell it out of the box I think the, the bottle is so beautiful um, I don't know if you can see that but this is the box here and it's a product of Spain. So I'm just gonna put in a couple of those drops. We're talking just really, I don't know if you can see that there. That's too much. I'm, gonna, I'm not even gonna put all that in. I'm gonna put partial. Just half of what you saw there. Really, you're just talking about a few drops. That's my taste. There might be others. Maybe I'm uh, working my way up and I'm a year or two away from uh, drinking this stuff like a, sh like a shot. But I got this other brand here. This one, I, I could respect for, uh, what it is, but it's super strong. I mean, it is like, I mean, even look at the colors. This is like, reminds me of something that might have sat in the sun for a little bit and they made a liqueur out of it. This one here is more like your, uh, your uh, high, Highland Scotch version of fish sauce. So I would, I would definitely go for the Florida Garum if you uh, ever find it. Um, you can message me and I can probably find at least a store for you if you're that interested. It really smells beautiful. I smell the lemon, the garlic, the actual butter, cream, the umami effect of this, just beautiful. All right, I'm gonna bang that away a little bit right there. And I got myself a little terrine. You can wet your spoon a little bit. Sometimes that forms a barrier or you make it hot. But when it's room temp, your better bet is to uh, use a spoon as a barrier. You just kind of have to do a one shot canal vibe on that. There we go. That's a rough canal. I would have failed my practical exam on that one, but it's, um, I, I would be, I like things sometimes not perfect when I'm uh, serving something I made. So there we go. So we're going to call this a Mediterranean Flor de Garum butter. So we got our Mediterranean Flor de Garum compound butter here. We just call it Mediterranean butter if we want. With some very crusty bread here. This is my snack right now with some wine. So if there are two things we get out of this crisis right now, one will be you learned how to wash your hands. The other should be that you learn how to make no need bread. And if you don't, follow the link. Just follow the link or Google the information here on the screen to find out more. I, I just, this bread is worth the work. So if you're not used to making bread, the idea here is that this kind of bread, it gets a little, let's call it stalish, you know? But if you pop it back in the oven, watch what happens. You're back to fresh again. It just needs about five minutes in a nice hot oven and you're ready to go, and but you keep it wrapped. Um, this this loaf I had in my freezer for uh, a few weeks. I actually made it uh, last month, and I'm sure glad I did because I'm happy to have ha have the bread to eat now. And uh, you bring it back to life uh, just by some oven time. Right, tonight we're using uh, sea salt from Portugal, so that's called flor de sal, flower of the sea. We just have a little. Seasoning on both sides, and into the hot pan we will go. We're gonna, I'm gonna make myself a little toast here. Um, I'm gonna make myself like a fancy steak sandwich. Plain. We have some fresh spinach that I put in the freezer a few weeks ago. Um, 
I'm always buying a container of spinach and then throwing out the last half of it. So I was tired of doing that. And uh, this happened, uh, you know, a while ago where I made this conscious decision that I will freeze the remaining uh, bits of spinach here. So that's here in the Ziploc bag. We're going to throw it into a pan with just a tiny bit of uh, grapeseed oil. And we'll get that sizzle. We're just going to simply cook it with salt, um, a little bit of salt. And it's to go with the steak, maybe a touch of garlic. With time the steak is getting seared. And we have a piece of toast in the oven. Steak is searing up nice. I haven't touched it since I put it in the pan. Got a nice little crust going. That's what I'm looking for. Spinach is working. We're gonna cook this down. We're gonna squeeze out extra liquid if we need. The, the garlic stays in. This has a floater. It's called the essence of the garlic being pushed around in there. I'm not looking to have a, a slamming garlicky uh, back to spinach here. Let it swim around. Off. I just want to show you, uh, we got the steak out of the pan, and uh, we have just one paper towel. We are going to squeeze out the extra moisture on that spinach as it just we got it out of the pan. All right, that's the idea here. We take a little bit of that juice out, let the paper towel absorb it, and this way when we eat it, it'll be more of a dense, flavorful thing to enjoy eating. Show you the plating. We missed how to cut the skirt steak. So I cut it in half so I can then get at cutting it against the grain. That's always been the theory. Cutting it against the grain will provide you with a little slightly more toothsome, meaning tender, less toothsome probably is the right way to put it, um, cut. And here's the finished dish, a steak sandwich with Florida garum, compound butter, and spinach. Thank you all for watching. Please subscribe and comment below. It is much appreciated. Cheers, everybody.